we'll be looking at the time dimension. For this exercise, we will be using the human population. So I'm going to choose human population, and I'm going to choose this human population estimate and projection, which is a global annual national data set. So you see immediately the map has been updated and now each country is in a different shade of orange depending on the absolute uh, total population. I can change the year by going back in time by clicking to the left. So now the map is updated and show me 2020 and I can do that again back to 2019. I can also choose a particular time period. So the year the 2000s so let's go 2051. So this is a projection. It's got estimates also for future population projections. And you'll see that the map updates to follow me. The other thing I can do is to change time using this slider along the bottom. So I can, uh, I can play. So what's happening now is you'll see the time moving slowly along the bottom hand uh, strip and the map is updating as each time progresses. Uh, I can pause that, uh, I can make it faster, um, uh, well that's a little too fast, um, and I can also pick an exact date from here, so it's similar to the, to the uh, select that we saw before. The other thing that we can do is to take this data set and uh, split it into two. So I'm going to split the data set into two. And on the right hand side, we're going to put 2100. And on the left hand side, let's uh, put uh, the year 2000. So now we can see that we can compare the two time periods. Left hand side, 2000. Right hand side, at 2100. So this will show us uh, the, the, the breakdown. Okay, let me remove that split and remove uh, one of those uh, copies so we just have one human population. Uh, the other thing we can do is to inspect a particular country. So let's, uh, let's zoom in a little bit here. So uh, if I was to click, for example, on Kenya, it will now give me a small spark chart which will show me the evolution of over time. And we're looking here at total population. I can expand that and, and get a chart down the bottom. And I can do something similar for a neighboring country. So for example, I could take Uganda. So let me take Uganda. Again, we have the spark chart and I can add it to the chart along the bottom. And finally, we'll do the same with uh, Tanzania. So here we'll see our three lines uh, representing those three countries and you'll see that the uh, estimated future projections have the population in Tanzania increasing uh, quite, quite uh, more steeply than in uh, Uganda or Kenya. Okay, let's clean that up a little bit. I'm going to remove those charts here. And so we're back left to human population. So let's go back to the catalog and now let's look at uh, the human population density but rather than a single value for the whole country this is using a one kilometer grid cell. So let's see what that looks like. Okay let's, let's for a moment just uh, hide the, uh, the, the national figures and okay so now we see the, uh, the, the population density and so if you look at the scale here, we're looking at 2020. And then you can see as we go towards the blues, the purples and the dark red, we have, uh, we have more people. So let's zoom in a little bit further here. And uh, we can do a similar kind of trick. So let me just first of all make it a bit brighter. Uh, I can, I can uh, take this data set and I'm going to split it into two. So now I've got two copies of the human population density. On the left hand side, I'm going to put the year 2000. And on the right hand side, I'm going to put uh, the year 2020. 
So now we can see the difference in the population density at the one kilometer uh, grid cell level. Uh, so you'll see uh, there's some quite marked difference here. Wow, that's that's quite quite amazing how, how much more people there are there. Okay, so um, let's let's uh, remove that. So I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to. Um, stay just with the population density. So I didn't show you that you can actually click on the pixel itself uh, and we'll get the, the specific pi uh, pixel value. This is people per kilometer squared. So we also had uh, this, uh, this uh, national aggregate. So let's put this back up so it's a bit more visible. And uh, we can do a slightly different split. So I'm going to split using the split on the left hand side over here. So I've got population uh, national on the left, and I've got uh, population density on the right. Okay, now um, uh, the, uh, in fact, let's just change that around a little bit. I'll make this not so, uh, not so uh, transparent, and I'll put this on both. Okay, so right now um, we have um, Faustat, uh, I've just uh, switched it to be synchronized. So what does that mean? Um, when I click on this little this little marker here, it means that they will follow the bar along the bottom hand side. If I turn it off, then there's no bar that synchronizes the layers I'm currently viewing. Okay, so there's more than one layer viewed. I've got uh, human population estimates um, for the year 2000, and over here um, uh, we. we we, we have uh, the year 2000, this is not synchronizing, now it's synchronized. So you'll see that if I uh, change to a different time period, so let's say I ch change the time to uh, 2008, um, the, uh, 2005, sorry, uh, you'll see that both the population density is moved to 2005 and also the the annual time series has moved to 2005. So, so they're synchronized. Uh, let me show you that one more time. So and now I've switched to 2013, and so the human population density is to 2013, and so is the, um, the, the population. However, the population estimates here, if I was to choose a time period way into the future, so this has got a projection, whereas the population density didn't have a projection, and I choose that figure, uh, you'll see uh, that it won't let me because uh, the, the, the range that I'm constrained to is the common range between the different layers. So if I uh, change this now to uh, 2100, um, they're no longer synchronized uh, because I've, I've unsynchronized them uh, and we can see them both together. Okay, so that was a very rapid uh, walkthrough on the concept of time in the platform, and I'll close that here.